in video number 133, I introduced the thinking phase shield and explained the schematics. In the meantime, the shield is available in the Tendi store, either as do-it-yourself kit or as fully assembled and tested interface shield. In this video, I am going to show you how to build your own from the kit and how to use it on your Arduino to make it a DCC or LoopNet interface device. Hello everyone and welcome to the IoTT channel. I am Hans Tanner. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy you made it here and thank you for your support of the channel. And if you are here for the first time, please take a second to click the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat whenever new videos come out. So, the Tinker Face Shield is available now in the Tindy store and as all of my recent boards, it comes as finished product or as do-it-yourself kit. If you know how to solder, assembling the kit should not be too hard, so let me start by showing you how to do it. Here is a picture of the parts that come with the kit. First, the Tinker Face board itself. The board has been tested before shipping, so all you need to do is mounting the DCC connector, the configuration pins and the Arduino pin headers along with the needed jumpers. Start with soldering the DCC connector. Place it on the board, then solder one pin. Verify the correct position and make sure that the connector lays flat on the PCB. Since only one pin is soldered so far, it is easy to make corrections if needed. If all is good, solder the second pin as well. Then place the configuration pin headers on the PCB. One 2x4 pins for the I.O. selection, one 1x3 one pins for the signal selection for the I.O. TT stick and two 1x2 one two pins, one for the voltage selection and the other one to feed V into the LocalNet interface to make it act as LocalNet master. Place the pin headers in the correct location and put something flat on top of it so that you can turn it around and place it on the desk. I usually use a piece of plywood or something similar. Then solder one pin of each pin header. Again turn the board and inspect the position of each pin header. Make the necessary adjustments if they are not fully inserted or not in the correct angle. Again, if only one pin is soldered, this is easy to do. If all pins are sitting as they should, solder the remaining pins. Finally, place the Arduino headers on the board and proceed the same way. Solder one pin first, verify the correct angle and alignment of the pin headers, make corrections as needed and then solder the remaining pins. That's it. You have successfully assembled the Tinker Face Shield. And to make it even easier for you, I am in the process of designing a simple assembly chip where all parts can be inserted and soldered in just one single pass. I will make the design file available on Tinkercad in the next few days, so you can download and print it on a 3D printer. Once the Tinkerface shield assembly is complete, or you received it fully assembled from the Tindy store, it can be placed on your Arduino controller, either Uno or Mega, as shown here. Just make sure all pins are inserted straight and the shield board is parallel to the Arduino board. That's it. Now, let me demonstrate how to use it. For the first example, I built a simple DCC decoder using the NMRA DCC accessory decoder sketch that is part of the NMRA DCC library. One input pin is needed and it can be defined in the sketch. The Tinker Face Shield has a differential input with DCC plus and DCC minus on pins 2 and 3. So, I place the jumpers on either pin 2 or pin 3, or I place them on both as shown here, 
and I select the pin I want to use in the sketch, pin 2 in this example. Then I download the sketch and what it does is display the accessory decoder activity as soon as I send a switch command from my handheld throttle. If I want to see all DCC packets coming along the track, I can uncomment the notify DCC message line, which causes the sketch to display each message, but we warn it is a lot of messages scrolling through the monitor window. Nevertheless, when sending a switch command, it gets decoded as well. And if I freeze the output, I can go back in the message list and I can see the switch commands coming through. Another sketch we can use is the DCC Inspector X sketch you can find on the DCC X webpage. It has two work modes, one is timer based and works with anything, the other is interrupt based and requires to use pin 8 for DCC input. You can set the configuration in the file config.h line 51. On commands the use timer define to make it work in timer mode. By default, it is set to use interrupt mode, which outputs more details about the received DCC commands. And that is what I am showing here. To use pin 8 as DCC input, I remove the jumpers from pins 2 and 3 and use a DuPont cable to feed the DCC signal from one of the two source pins to pin 8. Then I compile the sketch and the monitor shows the commands that are coming down the track, as well as a periodic statistic showing all bits received during the previous 4 seconds. To see the locknet messages, we configure the interface to use pins 6 and 8 and load the locknet monitor sketch that comes with the locknet library. So, I put the jumpers on the pin headers labeled 6 and 8 to connect the IO pins. To make everything work, there are a few small changes we need to make in the Locunet library. Open the file lnconfig.h and scroll down to line 87 and uncomment the line. Verify that line 92 is uncommented as well. Then I load the Locunet monitor sketch from the Locunet library. In loconetmonitor.ino line 14, I add a 6 into the parentheses to tell the library to use pin 6 as transmit pin. And since I am used to it, I change the serial port baud rate from 57600 to 150200 as well. When done, I compile the sketch and upload it to the Arduino board. If I now use a handheld throttle to send loconet commands, they get displayed in the Arduino monitor. Note that the display uses hex numbers, but some of the commands are translated into plain English. And of course, you can also use the JMRI Locunet monitor or a Locunet viewer on a connected IoT stick to display the commands in a more legible format. The growth port can be used to feed either the DCC or the Locunet signal to an attached device, for example, an IoT stick. The 5 volt pin of the growth port is not connected, so any device connected to it needs to have its own power supply, for example, from a USB port. If you are connecting an IoT stick, the best way is using a DCC aux shield, which also has the head connector interface for the IoT stick. You then run a 10 cm growth port cable through the hole in the aux shield and connect it to the growth port of the IoT stick. Use a jumper on the 3 pin pin header of the Tinkerface shield to select whether you want to feed the DCC or the Locunet signal to the stick. The remaining two jumpers are for limiting the voltage of the input signal to 3.3 volts which should be selected when using the IoT stick or any other microcontroller that uses 3.3 volts for the IO pins. And the V-in pin is for activating a 15 milliamp current source for the Locunet. 
This allows for making the Tinker Face Shield the Loconnect Master Node so that you can use it for connecting devices like block detector modules and the like to build a standalone Loconnect network without using a central unit. Here we see the jumper setting for using the Loconnect signal. To make use of it, I configured the IoT stick to use the Loconnect interface as command source. And now I can open the Loconnect viewer to see the Loconnect commands that are sent over the network. And I still show the DCC commands in the monitor window of the Arduino sketch. So you can see the impact of the Loconnect command on the DCC output. And in the same way, I can set the jumper for using the DCC signal and configure the IoT stick to use the DCC interface as command source. And now I can open the DCC viewer to see the DCC commands that are coming down the track. In this example, I show the DCC commands on both the IoT stick and the Arduino monitor. But as seen before, it is possible to display the Loconet commands on the Arduino while watching the DCC commands on the IoT stick and vice versa. It is even possible to run both the Arduino and the IoT stick as independent Loconet devices and have them communicating with each other via Loconet messages. So you have complete flexibility to do whatever you want. So the Tinkerface Shield offers a lot of possibilities for tinkerers who want to play with DCC and Loconet messages. But as you remember from previous videos, the main reason for making it was to use it as the combined DCC and Loconet interface for the Silverhead Booster project. That is what I am going to focus on in the next video. And as mentioned before, if you don't want to miss that, it is a good idea to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be in a premium seat when that new video comes out. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you. And I am looking forward to hear about the devices you built using the Tinkerface Shield. Please leave your ideas and feedback in the comment section below and click the like button to help to promote this video on YouTube and to support the IoTT channel in general. It's free, takes only a split second, but helps a lot. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.